हेलो गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल वेलकम टू पी डब्ल्यू गेट इंग्लिश चैनल इन दिस सेशन विल बी लर्निंग अनदर मॉडल ऑफ रेगुलर लैंग्वेज विच इज द फाइनेट ऑटोमेटा वी नो देर आर मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ मशीन्स इन फाइनेट ऑटोमेटा एंड विल बी लुकिंग एट ऑल द टाइप्स ऑफ फाइनेट ऑटोमेटा इन विच द फर्स्ट टॉपिक विच इज डिटर्मिस्टिक फाइनेट ऑटोमेटा राइट या गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल या तनुज रेवंत गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग पाद गुड इवनिंग सो आर यू आंसरिंग द क्वेश्चन ऑफ ऑल दी क्लासेस सो प्लीज कमेंट इन द comment section so that you know i'll be looking at your answers good evening so yeah good part yeah i can see your uh, replies part then tanuj yeah mamta good evening nice okay what is there in that uh, finite automata the first we will be looking at what is finite automata then configuration get uh, tf and nf you might have aware that there are two types of राइट What do you mean by finite automata? There are two types of machines. One which can recognize, other not only recognizes, it can also produce an output. Uh, is uh, voice issue is happening for all? Oh my God! Let me check. Okay, just give me a second. We'll cross check. some nice issue is there it's fine now uh, is it still exist the noise fine now okay all right so what is finite automata commonly we will be looking at the definition based on the recognition so what finite automata does you might design finite automata with the help of different representations and when you give an input uh, to this finite automata so that we call it as input string input string is defined over particular sigma and this machine is accepting let's say some language it's used or uh, designed for recognizing particular language l now really if it is accepting some language l what is the finite automata job once you run this string on the machine like when you give input to the program program runs and does something and produces some output but here we don't produce an output we observe the behavior of the machine uh, where it holds so uh, to understand the string we have two types of states one is called as the final state other is called as non final state if this machine holds at final state that is called as the given input is called as the valid string so here if the machine holds at final then we say then given w is belongs to l means w is the valid string if finite automata holds at non final at non final we say w not belongs to l here w belongs to l means valid string w not belongs to l means invalid string 
so you can understand now given input is valid or not with the help of the halting nature so this machine always halts and that too it halts at either final or non final so we have two types of machines it always starts at in from initial state and will be, will be halting at some state that some state might be final or non final so this is the behavior and the definition of finite automata but you know there are various types of finite automata in which some machines accept some machines even produce so here the finite automata classified into mainly two types this one is a behavior of without output used for recognizing the strings of the language the another one with output works like a transducer will produce some output and when it is without output we have two types of machines deterministic and non deterministic okay these two machines are by nature equivalent because you can convert from one to other these two machines and if you want to produce an output from the finite automata then we have two types of machines the more machine and a milli machine and these two machines are also equivalent you can convert from one to other so we have two types of machines of without output two types of machines with output and further this nfa can be designed at in two ways uh, with epsilon moves and without epsilon moves and again both are equivalent so one you can convert to other easily so this is about the classification of finite automata but we are looking at first dfa then nfa then we'll go slowly to other types of machines okay now how the configuration looks like what kind of the definition we are going to use that depends on the five parameters like q sigma delta q not f so anything you do with the finite automata which will depend on this five parameters so if you look at the configuration the finite automata has the tape this tape is called as input tape why it's called as input tape because you store or you keep input on this tape let's say something like this triple ab and the head always begins this is a head always begins from the first symbol of the input this head is by default a read head and now whatever the machine that you design which will have the control we will have the we will call it as finite control so you may assume it is your uh, finite automata where you have the initial state final state and uh, non final states and you will be having transitions all together is called as the finite control like your program basically program has uh, the control over the input and will decide what to do with the input now this head moves only one direction only one direction and will definitely stop once this last symbol read so once it reads the b it is going to halt at some state either final or non final so if it halts after reading the b if it halts at final then this string is valid after reading the b if it halts at non final this string is invalid invalid not valid that means is that clear this is the you know how the finite automata configuration looks like now here here all these five parameters are represented but how so this finite control let me uh, explain a little bit in detail so this finite control is nothing but let's say some machine okay i might be drawing the diagram but no need to do you may you know even keep a table or you may represent any other form suppose i have something like this some machine don't worry what is this some machine okay a or maybe b now what happens uh, with this machine so initially a is going to read from the q not so q not reads a and when it reads a it will be there in the q not so by reading a it will go to q not by reading a it will go to q not by reading a it will go to q not q not when it reads b it goes to q1 and q1 is going to be the halting state and look at here there is a double circle there is a single circle double circle state is called as a final so after reading this string it's going to halt at final state that means this string is valid if you don't have this b 
and after reading triple a it's going to halt at q not only but q not is non final that means the triple a is invalid but triple a followed by b is a valid string so after reading the b so it's starting from q not and again goes to q not again goes to q not again goes to q not from q not when it reads b it goes to q1 so that's halting state and q1 is a final that is why the given string this string is a valid string so this is how we decide the string is valid or not i hope you are learning the first time they should have a clarity what is the valid string and invalid string everyone so after reading the whole string where it halts is it halting at a single circle or it is halting at double circle if it is halting at single circle state that is called as non final state if it is halting at double circle state that is called as a final state so if it halts at double circle state then it is a valid string if it halts at single circle that is invalid string and anybody can be final anybody can be non final that you decide who will be the final and non final there is uh, no restriction maybe all states are non final or maybe all states are final it depends on your uh, representation okay now here what is q q is called as set of states here q is called as like q not and q1 so this is called as set of states sigma is called as set of input symbols here a b are input symbols delta is actually your diagram this diagram is nothing but transitions so the transitions can be represented with the help of delta delta is called as transition function what is delta it is called as transition function so everything you have represented is here nothing but transitions only you can also call the finite limit is nothing but set of transitions so every transition is represented here so by looking at the transitions you should know what kind of language it is representing what do you think sima now this delta is two types one is for dfa one is for nfa we'll be seeing that and for dfa for dfa the definition is q cross sigma maps to q and for nfa q cartesian product with a sigma along with epsilon if you want and 2 power q of course epsilon present then it is nfa with epsilon moves epsilon not there then nfa without epsilon moves that's delta q not is the start state also called as initial state and f is called as the here q not is q not only but f is nothing but here set of final states how many final states are there in the given machine only one but in general zero or more if you don't have a final state then here you should write empty set if you have two states are final then you have to write a set which has two final states so here f is nothing but here f is nothing but only one state is a final that is a q1 and delta is a set of transitions this entire control can be represented with the help of delta so how do we represent that with the help of definitions if you know the definition of df and nfa you can write delta how it looks like this complete representation is uh, going to take the help of delta fine so this is the finite automata configuration how it is going to work if the string is valid it's going to halt at a uh, final if the string is invalid it's going to halt at non final so you decide the string is valid or invalid by running that string on the given machine okay it's very easy even uh, when a uh, question has the finite bit and string you can easily decide is it valid or invalid okay so now with this you should know what is the finite automata now here what is dfa and nfa what is the difference between dfa and nfa of course nfa also called as ndfa it means a non deterministic finite automata and this one is the deterministic finite automata and this one non deterministic is a single word finite automata what is the relation if you look at the relation the first one here you must know how delta is defined here q sigma the cartesian product of q sigma maps to q that means domain is q cross sigma codomain is q and what about nfa nfa is going to have the definition 
it may have epsilon or not but that maps to codomain as the power set of q so this is the first important transition function and that is also definition that you can use for the definition of df and nfa but to understand it it takes time here the meaning of this q cross sigma maps to q it means from every state you will observe something from every state for every input symbol for every input symbol you will see something in q that is exactly one transition you will observe in the machine exactly one transition you will see that goes to next state exactly one transition that goes to or uh, that maps to next state this so you have q cross sigma that maps to q it's a very important to understand you when i design a machine you can easily observe is a dfa or not dfa if it is not a dfa definitely you will not follow this definition from every state for every input you will have exactly one if you have zero or more than one definitely that is not a dfa for every symbol you should have a transition for every symbol you should have a transition and that to exactly one transition if you see either no transition or more than one transition you can easily say it is not a dfa but it is going to be nfa okay in that case second point here there is no restriction from any state of course from every state for every input for every input you may have any number of transitions if you don't have an input that is also fine if you talk about epsilon nfa moves okay nfa with epsilon moves so here no need to write the definition because anything is fine so every finite automata is definitely nfa no doubt about it okay so no restriction at all no restriction at all how you want to design you decide because whether you have an input or not uh, how many transitions are there no restriction zero or more transitions whether you read input or not doesn't matter so no restriction at all how you define the finite automata that's why you have a two power q there but you should follow exactly five parameters to define okay let's look at uh, some observations about a dfa and nfa you can see easily you can uh, say one thing i'll write the third point here itself every every dfa this every dfa every dfa is definitely nfa this definition is already covered inside but the nfa nfa need not be dfa it may or may not that depends on how you design nfa may be dfa may not be dfa the third point yes a traffic light you know how this traffic light changes uh, you know from a uh, one type of signal to other type of signal that you can model with the help of finite automata that's the best example you can also go for the ones complement and twos complement any digital circuit that you want to design you can take the help of finite automata in fact the lexical analysis of the compiler is real time right practically you have the compiler so to recognize the tokens you need some regular expression or pattern and that you can design with the dfa like you want to identify the identifiers you want to recognize the identifier letter followed by either letters or digits right that kind of rule you can start with either letter or underscore but you should not start with the digit and that sequence can be modeled with the help of a dfa the plenty of examples like the spell checker in your word document right when you open the word document when you type some word if any spelling mistake it will come with underline uh, it there is red color underlined something like that so what's happening behind behind the some kind of dfa is running dfa program is running to check that whatever the you typed that word is it there in the dictionary or not right whether it is dfa or nfa doesn't matter because both are equivalent finally the dfa finally the dfa is going to be the ultimate the program equivalent right when when you have nfa you finally should convert into dfa because dfa exactly looks like your program right of course the simplest program which uses just one byte to represent okay every dfa is nfa but nfa need not be dfa okay what is your doubt uh, seema using nfa or dfa anything is fine here you can use either nfa or dfa they are equivalent 
they are equal they are theoretical models they are both theoretical models if you have nfa that means you have a dfa if you have a dfa that means you have nfa it doesn't matter whether you use dfa or nfa both are equivalent both are equivalent okay don't assume you are using dfa you are using dfa means you are also using nfa every dfa is nfa remember that every dfa is nfa okay now i'm just uh, drawing the diagram assume sigma is equal to a comma b that just you need to tell me whether it is dfa or nfa okay some version i am drawing here okay just look at it and tell me whether it is dfa or nfa okay just look at and answer it okay what are these motions who is dfa and who is nfa here okay just observe and answer it okay just can you identify who are nfas here who are dfas here that means you'll get an idea of difference between dfa and nfa okay please answer yourself what is dfa and what is nfa by looking at this example one thing is guaranteed all machines are nfa okay all machines are one point every machine here is non deterministic machine but some non deterministic machines are dfs some are not dfs is that clear there is no such point whether you have a final state or not who is that mamata never look for the final state final state may or may not be there because final states could be empty set of final states that set can be empty remember here without final states also machine every machine is here every machine is here nfa this is nfa and this is also nfa and this is also nfa and every machine is nfa no doubt all the machines are nfa now the problem is which nfas are dfas here because those motions which looks like a deterministic they are dfas what do you mean by deterministic from every state for every input symbol exactly one transition now look at here how many states are there let me number it let me number it let me number it this is 1 and 2 this is 1 and 1 2 1 2 one one so now here there are two states and from every state for every input symbol exactly one here from one on a is one transition on b is one transition but from two it's a is missing b is missing that means it is not a dfa it is not a dfa it is not and don't look at how many finals are there finals and non-finals that is your choice it depends on your language what need to be accepted what need to be rejected that will decide whether you have finals whether you have no finals okay never look for finals are there finals are not there doesn't matter okay now the second point ho oh, from every state for every input symbol there is exactly one see from one a is a one from one for b is also one transition so this is a dfa and look at the three and you have one state but transition for a is missing transition for b is missing that's why it's not a dfa various reasons why there are many reasons why it is not a dfa and the fourth one and here also there are transitions are missing so it is not a dfa it is not dfa right this so is one of the important point before learning how to construct the dfa and the fifth one is it dfa just check from one exactly two transitions one for a one for b 
and from 2 also exactly 2 transitions, 1 for A, 1 for B. So this is a DFA. And the sixth one, and look at from 1, there are 2 transitions, 1 for A, 1 for B, and from second state, 1 for A, 1 for B. So see, A comma B means A, edge is 1, but transitions are, there are 2 transitions here, 1 for A, 1 for B. So this is also DFA. So I hope you got a clarity what is a DFA and what is NFA. Every NFA is, sorry, every finite automata is NFA going to be here, but some NFAs are DFAs, some NFAs are not DFAs, okay. That's guaranteed. All are NFAs, but there is a question here. Are you talking about with epsilons or without epsilons? When they ask, be careful, this all NFAs, you do not have explicit epsilon moves. But this all are NFAs. That's enough for the exam point of view. Okay. So remember, NFAs, that's it. Whether it is with epsilons or without epsilons, doesn't matter, they are NFAs, non-deterministic motions. Okay. Now, by this time, you are aware what is a DFA, right? You know how to identify the DFA. Now, let's start designing the finite automata. Now, we are going to construct the finite automata at different ways or different for different languages. Okay, the first problem. In case you want to understand how to represent empty language over the sigma is equal to a comma b, how do you design? So anyhow, you cannot answer the question, right, uh, in the comment. So let me design. So now there is no string is valid. Now there is a no string is valid. Yes, power of NFA and DFA right now you don't understand. All are equivalent, okay. So that you don't uh, worry right now. First learn individually DFA that we are looking at now. In future, NFA we will look at. Without epsilon most we will look at. And then... Another NFA also will look into it, NFA with epsilon moves. Uh, doesn't matter what you follow, what you design. All are actually convertible one to other. That's why we say equivalent. They all are equivalent because you can convert one to other. Okay, remember this point. The power of all these three machines are same because uh, they are going to represent regular languages. All regular languages, you can use any of these three machines or you can use all the three machines. It's your choice. If I have a DFA, that means I also have NFA. If I have NFA, that means I also have a DFA. Okay. But we first construct a deterministic finite automata. Okay. First, we are constructing DFA only. That's a more important for the exam point of view. Whoever understands DFA, for them, NFA is not difficult at all. Okay. Now, how to design a DFA? If you want to design DFA, then definitely there should be no final Y. Because I don't want to accept any string. Every string in the world should be rejected because my language is empty. That means no final state should be there. And this is the non-final. And in fact, it is also called as dead state. Why? I should never reach final from the initial. Because every string should be rejected from the initial. So now, for A comes or B comes, you can always stay here. Okay. So this is the initial state. And there is no final state. In fact, you can also design with the two states. If you really want it, I can design, I can go to the second state. Either A or B, I will go to the second state. I can stay there also. And there are many machines, not only these two machines. There are many DFAs. If you ask me the question, for every regular language, there are infinite DFAs. For every regular language in the world, take over any sigma infinite number of DFAs exist. But which one you will follow? When there are infinite number of DS, DFAs exist, then which one you will follow? Which DFA will follow? Okay. Now, the second point For every regular language, you will always see, for every regular language, one 
minimum DFA, only one, unique, you can say only one or unique minimum DFA, only one. only one means unique minimum DFA exist so you always worry about what is the minimum DFA I know there are many DFAs in the world don't try every DFA because it's very difficult to design all possible DFAs you try to design the best DFA if I have a DFA with one state that means that is going to be only one there is no other DFA which accepts same language with one state so with one state only one DFA you can design and with the two states there might be many DFAs because this is not a minimum this is not a minimum but when there is a minimum DFA minimum DFA what is a minimum DFA those DFA are that DFA which has the less number of states in the world to represent the language that is called as a minimum DFA this is a DFA also minimum DFA it is just a DFA, but it is not a minimum DFA, but not a minimum. Okay, so for every language, for every language, every regular language, you will be having one minimum DFA, that's it. You will never have two DFAs which have less number of states. Okay. Right now, you know, you can only understand what is the difference between DFA and NFA. This is exactly what you want. Here already you, ans you have an answer. When you design a DFA, you should uh, design uh, deterministically. So this is a DFA. When you design NFA, you do not worry about how you design. Right? You will worry about what are the valid strings. So first try to design, right? You do not have the construction idea about NFA. So, understanding the definition of DFA and NFA at this point could be difficult. Even understanding DFA definition right now could be really difficult for you. But the definition already there in front of you, unless you don't understand the first point of these two, you will never understand the definition of DFA and NFA. So, if you are really good at mathematics, you could already got the answer what is DFA and what is NFA. Okay, so this is the definition of DFA and NFA, but to understand it, this is the definition already given from every state for every input symbol, there is exactly one transition you will see and it gives you many other uh, derived definitions like if the string is valid, you will have exactly one path whole set final, if the string is invalid, you will be having exactly one path that whole set non final, if the string if, the, if you don't run the string in this motion, you will have exactly one path whether it is valid or invalid. But here, there are there are a diff, there is a different definition. If the string is valid, you have at least one path. So that you cannot understand right now because we did not start about NFA. So really, these two points at this moment is enough. But already DFA definition is here. With this, there are a lot of implic you know implications are there. So first try to understand how to design a DFA then from that when we go to NFA you can compare how DFA was designed what was the meaning of DFA then you compare with NFA then it will work okay and the first day itself sir what is the program how do I write a program for every problem in the world impossible right the same way you want to know what is the DFA NFA is the same as you want to know how to write a program for every problem in the world impossible okay so this is a very important point and knowing about DFA and, and NFA the first day may be not possible because you have never seen DFA and NFA then really difficult to understand what is the definition of DFA and NFA. But already definitions are there but you are not able to follow this mathematics. So you need to wait for some time while designing you will get to know oh DFA should be designed this way then the meaning of DFA comes out why deterministic because from every state for every input symbol you have exactly one 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 that makes deterministic motion but that means I am giving you definition you give me valid string or invalid string you will be having exactly one path in the motion that exactly one path makes deterministic motion but here non-deterministic zero or more paths might be there zero or more you don't know how many paths depends on how you design the machine okay that makes the non-deterministic machine but every DFA is NFA because when you have the one path here any paths can be fine you have one path that is also comes under DF NFA okay so here the example so to understand 
okay right now don't worry about nfa we are worried about dfa how to design first learn dfa dfa means deterministic you give me any string i will always have exactly one path here i will never have two paths i will never have zero paths i have exactly one path not more not less you ask me any string in the world you will have exactly one path here ask me epsilon one path ask me a one path ask me b one path double a one path ab one path ba one path double b one path so that machine is called as deterministic finite automata clear this point so you ask me any machine sorry you ask me any string then this dfa will have exactly one path that may halt at final may halt at non final depends on what language you are representing and this language is empty that's why i don't have a final at all because i don't want to accept any string that's why i don't have the final in the machine because my language is empty my language is empty is that clear okay keep going slowly at one point of time you will get to know exactly what you mean by dfa now l is equal to the sigma star sigma star means let's say a plus b whole star okay that over a and b we are designing then how do you design a deterministic finite automata in fact you wanted to know how, what is nfa here already these are nfas but you can also design so many nfas see here this is also nfa this is also nfa this is also nfa and even with one state you can have lot of machines right with one state you have only one minimum dfa but there are four minimum nfas for the same problem with one state i can design four nfas this are nfas minimum nfas that too but this is only minimum dfa remaining all are not minimum dfas you can see that point if you want to design nfa just tell me just tell me do you have any valid string then show me the path when you don't have a valid string you no need to show me the path at all so that makes some time to understand so don't worry about nfa right now just focus on a, uh, dfa already you are designing dfa means indirectly you are designing nfa too okay now every string want to be accepted that is there is no string should be rejected and i don't need non finals now now i need only finals okay because i want to accept every string this is called as set of all strings in the language every string is there so that means when you start the initial state should be final and when do you make initial state is a final if your language has epsilon if your language has epsilon then definitely you should make initial is the final if you don't make initial is final right then you will never accept epsilon in the dfa so in dfa remember this point initial state must be final in case if you want to accept epsilon now after that every string should be accepted so whether a comes or b comes doesn't matter you just stay in final so now epsilon what is the path okay let me put this is the state one so this is the path so one you start and end there only because you don't need to read any input a and from one read a you will be going to one for b from one by reading b you will go to one and all there and double a you will be there one always because the self loop makes you stay there only do you give me any string from here you always halts in the state one and one already final that's why where do you halt for all the strings you are halting at one of course all of them starting one only but you see where do you halt you will halt here you are halting at one always the last state in the transition in the path represent that is halting state so you are halting at final that's why all the strings are accepted all the strings are accepted that makes a plus b whole star i hope you understood how to read the string too this is a very famous language universal language universal language okay third example now you see language is sigma plus it makes it makes the epsilon is not there in the language but except epsilon everybody there except epsilon everybody there so how do you design a dfa how do you design deterministic finite automata how many states needed now 
can you try how many states needed just tell me how many states needed yeah exactly two states enough and you need to observe like epsilon is it there no right epsilon is not there we, what is the minimum string either a or b so epsilon should not be accepted remember that so initial state should not be final very simple now minimum string is either a or b so comma means r so you take a or b so this is not a one translate it's two transitions one for a one for b instead of writing one for a one for b you are just making one edge for both of them so remember that and that makes on a you can go to this state on b you can go to this state but this state should be final because you need to accept a or b but are you accepting only a or b no right a followed by anything should be accepted b followed by anything should be accepted so here you are going to put a self loop for a or b and now is it dfa look at from this state one for a one for b from this state one for a one for b it's definitely dfa and in fact the uh, expression looks like this way a or b followed by a or b whole star and that makes definitely a plus b whole plus but always motion may not look like in this simple form here the motion can also be observed like expression so right this has a nearest relationship with the expression a or b followed by a or b whole star that makes a plus b whole plus okay to reach a final from initial at least one length string should be there okay so this can be represented as even w such that the w belongs to a comma b whole star where length of the w greater than 0 that means equal to 0 is not accepted but greater than 0 every string is there okay it's very simple length problem it is okay now uh, the fourth one can somebody design a dfa to accept only epsilon but sigma is very important sigma a or b okay let's see how many states are there in the language which has only epsilon okay now how many states are required that means you are not designing a dfa if you are only doing with one state you are not looking for a dfa you might be designing nfa right two states two states needed learning so those people who are designing one state i don't know why did you get a one state you are not trying for a dfa if you are designing this this machine it is nfa not a dfa remember that it is not a dfa so how do you design a dfa definitely epsilon should be accepted but every string you have exactly one path here no no path for a no path for b where is the definition of dfa now you ask me what is the definition of dfa this is not dfa because it's not satisfying dfa definition from every state for every input symbol exactly one transition then where is transition for a and b and for a or b go to there is a special state is called as basically dead state why it is called as a dead state because once you reach here you will never it's impossible to go for final go to the final right this is a special state it is a non-final it is a non-final but whoever comes here they will struck here itself because everything every sequence that comes here is going to be rejected because from here to the final there is no path so this is called as dead state what is dead state it is a non-final whoever comes to this non-final and they will struck there okay it's impossible to go final once you come to dead state very special non-final you can say special non-final it is not like no other non-finals remember it is a special non-final whoever comes here they always stay in the dead means they never go to final state okay now this is going to represent epsilon epsilon and this is in fact a minimum dfa but it is not a minimum nfa remember here minimum nfa is going to take one state and this is a minimum nfa and in fact it is not a dfa at all not dfa 
this is the minimum DFA and that is the minimum NFA. You want to design minimum NFA, it is one state. If you want to design minimum, minimum DFA, it requires two states. And minimum NFA and minimum DFA, no need to match. For some problems, they may match. Minimum DFA, you, can, you may call it as some problems, minimum NFA. But here, the minimum DFA and NF, minimum NFA are different and they have this different number of states. Okay. Fifth point. Okay, L is equal to W such that the W belongs to A comma B whole star and length of W is equal to exactly two length string. Did you remember the expression? You just say A or B followed by A or B or you can write the language as A plus B whole square or you can write double A or AB or BA or BB. Okay, which might be lengthy but it is also right expression. Okay, can you design a DFA and tell me how many states you have? And you can also make a shortcut based on this. It was the one of the gate question, previous PYQ, one of the gate PYQ. Four states, um, yes, four states. How? When you want to design the length, right? So length you need to track like this. This is the zero length because epsilon only can halt here. And either A comes or B comes and it represent one length and two length A comma B this is going to represent two length and if it comes more than two length then you can go to the dead state and stay there always and which length you want to accept exactly two length so zero length one length two length and stay here and accept so every two length will halt here every one length will halt here every zero length will halt here every length more than two will halt here so which one you are accepting all the time two length so how many states you have to understand the two length you need the three states to reject more than two length will be having extra dead so two plus two two plus two if this is equal to n then the number of states will become like n plus two states actually how did you get that plus two n plus one to understand n length plus one states so n plus 2 states you need n plus 1 this 2 length you need 3 states and for rejecting extra 1 state so for n length for exactly n length strings you need n plus 2 states okay you can remember that now if i ask length of string is equal to 100 then 102 states needed length of the string is equal to 1000 then 1002 states needed that's all you need to answer in the exam when you see this kind of question and of course for the n length they already asked one time nfa will have n plus 1 because this is not required dead states not required in the minimum nfa don't say dead states are not there in the minimum nfa you don't need a dead states okay you don't need a dead state this is also nfa but it's not a minimum okay if it is uh, you want to design minimum nfa there you will be having just n plus 1 states. Dead state is not required. But if you want a minimum DFA, you need even dead state also, which makes n plus 2. Okay. Just delete this state, it will become just NFA. And you are not covering the transitions for this because they are invalid. Okay. Sixth, okay, today we don't have much time, but you practice all these problems. Okay, sixth and seventh together. Can you find the number of states and generalize after this? Can you generalize? This is at least two length, minimum, like you want to uh, represent at least two, like a plus b whole square followed by any length, at least two length. And at most two length, did you remember at most 100 length? It's a plus b plus epsilon whole square. The expression, how do you write? So minimum two length. The previous machine already has an answer. Minimum two length. So zero length, one length and two length. And after that, everything should be accepted. So one length either A or B, second length is also either A or B and followed by any number of sequence, any number of symbols in the sequence. So this makes 
at least two so three states three states three that state is not needed now so if it is n if this is n then how many states required n plus one states needed if that is n n plus one states needed at least n length makes n plus one states even nfa also minimum nfa also you will be having same minimum nfa and minimum dfa both will have the same number of states you will be having n plus 1 here also n plus 1 states but there could be more minimum nfas no need to design minimum nfa like this you, you have other choices also for minimum nfas and for this one yes you will be having i think four states not three states same zero length accepted here and one length also accepted here and two length also accepted here three states are there but three length it's a dfa you need to design right with this you are able to design finite automata but it's not a deterministic finite automata so here ab covered here ab covered here ab is missing what to do on ab you should go to dead state because three length onwards you should reject total four states but if you want to design minimum nfa you don't need this that's all the difference right so now this makes a minimum dfa minimum dfa definitely will have four states minimum nfa will have just three states so in general that four is n plus two and this three is n plus one you can convert it Okay. So I'm trying. Suppose I have W such that W belongs to A comma B whole star. Length of the string is let's say divisible by 3 and same problem similar problem w such that w belongs to a comma b whole star and number of a's of w is divisible by 3 almost both are same similar problems but one worried about length other worried about the symbols other worried about the symbols so how do you design these two problems these are the remainder problems right so how many remainders will be having three remainders zero one two and for each remainder you need a one state this is zero remainder one remainder and remainder two and remainder three remainder three is not there so three will become zero four will become one five will become two and six gets the remainder zero seven length will get the remainder one eight length will get a remainder two so zero length one length two length three length four length five length six length seven length eight length so you need to make a cycle that's it just three states one length second length and third length remainder begins with a zero so this makes epsilon accepted and then three length accepted back and then six length nine length 12 length is accepted here if you want the one remainder strings are accepted then make this is a final if you want remainder two after dividing with three remainder two length strings are accepted then you make this as a final so you decide which one to make a final okay so this is about divisible by three concept for the lengths but similarly number of a's number of a's here here a or b is a length right one length one length one length now a is the same machine on a you change the state on a you change the state and third a comes you come to the final but b's are also there what you do for the b's for the b's we don't have any count we don't remember we rem we can see any number of b's any time any place so you can have any number of b's here you can have any number of b's we never count them we only count a's so when the a's comes change the state to remember how many a's are there so if three a's comes we will come back to final but any number of b's can come from any place we never count them right so this is almost same machine it's a length problem length is divisible by three 
and uh, number of A's is divisible by 3. If I ask number of B's is divisible by 3, on B you will change, on A you put a self loop because A's we don't count when the number of B's is divisible by 3. So just look at how you should design these two kinds of machines. Okay, I hope you know I have other session to attend. So uh, let's see uh, what are the homework questions that you have today. Okay, so try to answer this question. Of course, not uh, dif so difficult. It's one of the question already solved. Number of faces divisible by three we solved. Even nothing but divisible by two. So just find how many states you have. The second question: Number of faces divisible by hundred. So it's a straightforward answer. You can do it very quickly. Third question: Number of uh, yes is even. Oh, but problem is. It's not A plus B whole star, it is A star B star. Remember, it's different problem. Positions are given, that's a different question completely. Now look at that. A star B star, now number of A's is even. Number of A's is even. Right, just check here. So try to practice this question. And W belongs to AB whole star. Now the language is something different. Epsilon, AB, AB, AB and a b a b a b and so on right so understand how to design a dfa remember the question is for dfa not for nfa okay don't do nfa i don't need minimum nfa i need minimum dfa if the dead set is there please include so this one is triple a followed by a plus b all star it means starting with a three a's so how you design starting with a three a's always so once 3a comes in the beginning, then only you go to final and accept everything. If the 3a's are not coming in the sequence, then go to dead state. Okay, just look at how many states required. So this is today's session. We'll catch uh, tomorrow with uh, more other topics too. Okay, see you. Bye-bye. Take care.